Hey there, I'm Al with Word Coming to PDX, the Western United States' largest cat trike dealer and your source for all things cat trike. We are here today to talk about everybody's favorite topic, fixing flat tires. Just joking. I mean, just joking about the favorite part. We're still going to talk about fixing flat tires. Before we get started, I would suggest going to the maintenance and safety page right up there on our website. Uh, under the service drop down, you will see uh, two important videos to watch, tire talk and rear wheel removal and reinstallation. Uh, by the way, as the name on the page suggests, this is where we post all of our videos for maintenance and safety uh, for your cat trike. Now in this video, we're gonna cover anatomy of tires and tubes, tools you should carry, techniques, some shortcuts, what doesn't work, uh, pump options, and flat resistant tire options. So let's get started. Changing tires is a pain in the ass. There, I said it. Nobody likes doing it. Counterintuitively, the smaller your tires, the more difficult it is to fix a flat. So the 406 tires on the front of pretty much all recumbent trikes, and, and often on the rear as well, can be so tight that, well, they're even more of a pain in the ass. The good news, well, as good as it gets, is that with the right tools and techniques, uh, the job is doable for pretty much anyone. Also, and this is important, I suggest that the time to practice changing tires is now, not when you're out on the road with a flat. And if after watching this video, you're still not comfortable and confident in your ability to do it, we're happy to have you stop into the shop for some hands-on practice. I mean, after all, that's why you bought your trike from Recumbent PDX. So, starting with anatomy of tires and tubes. As I discuss in the Tire Talk video, all tires have durable treads and lightweight sidewalls. The sidewalls have a bead. It's usually a, mechani uh, it's usually a metal wire uh, that hooks into a, a, a groove or flange in the rim. That and sufficient air pressure ensures that tires don't roll off the rim even under the ultra high lateral loads generated by high speed cornering. Tubes are designed to fill the entire void of the tire. So you always want to use the smallest tube rated for your tire. So here we have Catrike's standard marathon racer. That's what comes with your trike. It has a 40 millimeter cross section, and here we have two tubes also rated for 40 millimeter cross sections. The first one goes up to 40 millimeters. The second one starts at 40 millimeters. Always use a smaller one. That way you have less risk of the, of the uh, tube folding inside the tire or getting caught under the be bead and going pop. The tubes we sell almost always have Presta valves. These are different from the auto valve or Schrader valves that you're used to on your car or maybe even your most recent bicycle. Why something different? Because as rims have gotten lighter weight and narrower, the thick rubber stems of auto valves make a hole through the rim that's too big for the structural integrity of that rim. The narrower Presta solved that problem. The Presta's valve screws up and down. When it's up, it can be inflated. When it's down, it's sealed and it can't be inflated. Also, presumably, it won't leak. Tools that you should carry. When you picked up your new catch rake at Recumbent PDX, we gave you spare tubes, 406 sized for the front, and depending on your drive wheel, either 406 or 559 sized for the rear. So the first thing you should carry on your trike is spare tubes especially the 406s, which aren't generally stocked by bike stores. Now, I've got 60-year-old arthritic hands, and I mentioned above that the 406 can be tight as a drum. So I'm happy to have some helpers. My first helper is soap. Just like removing wedding rings, soap is great for removing and reinstalling tires. You can buy our Schwabi soap in a can. It looks just like the old Kiwi shoe polish, you know, the shoe polish with the sponge applicator we had as kids. But here's a pro tip. If you don't want to spend $8 for soapy water on a sponge, we'll then just put some soapy water on a sponge, seal it in a Ziploc bag, 
and carry it with you on your trike. Two, Park Tools Steel Core Tire Levers. Every bike store has tire levers at their checkout and none of them works with these tight as a drum 406 tires. They'll bend in half or snap in half before they actually pull a tire off a rim. Steel cores do not bend. We have two varieties of the steel core. The small, which fit in the seat back pocket of your cat trike, and large, which provides more leverage for a faster change, but are, as I say, they're larger and they're heavier. Now I have both, a set for the trike and a set for the home, because my wife owns a trike shop and I can have anything I want. But you pay retail, so you probably don't need both. Bead jack. Now, this is absolute magic. My old thumbs cannot work the last bit of a tire over the rim. The bead jack is fabulous. We'll show it a bit later. Now, these look like ordinary Schwabby tire levers, just like the type I said earlier. I told you they were useless, but they've got a bit of magic to them as well. As I will show later when we're demonstrating, they hook into the rim's bead groove or the flange to keep the soapy tire from sliding off as you're working it onto the rim. Tweezers. Doesn't even have to be that good a pair, like the one that rolls around in the bottom of your car with the Kleenex and the throat lozenges. Just, it's there to pull nails or staples or goat head thorns out of the, out of the tire. Uh, obviously, if you reinstall a tire and there's a goat head thorn in there, it's gonna pop. Technique. Okay, now that we've got our tools, let's work on technique. With a fully flat tire, the easiest place to start removal is opposite the valve stem. This is where the tire has the most slack. Oh, and here's a little pro tip. If you're fixing a front tire, you don't need to take the wheel off the trike. Just lock the brake, roll the trike on its side, and get to work. If it's a rear tire, we'll cover that a little bit later. So, with the tire fully deflated, I soap about 10 inches of the tire and the rim opposite the valve stem and using both steel core levers, get underneath the bead. This is really the only art part of the video. You'll wanna practice getting just the right amount of tire off the rim. If you take too little a section, too small a section, it pops right back on as you work your way around the rim. If you take too much and it's too tight to release the section, the, the tire won't, the bead won't even pop over the rim. With a little practice though, you'll feel exactly how much to release. Now, work your way around until one side of the tire is completely off the rim. You can now slide the tube out. Now you don't have to completely remove the tire, but I do, because it allows me to gingerly, gingerly run my fingers around the inside looking for stables, thorns, etc. that occasionally penetrate the tire and you gotta remove them or you're likely gonna puncture the replacement tube. Also, with the tire off, you can check the rim to make sure that there aren't any burrs on it that, again, might puncture a tube or that the rim tape hasn't slipped, revealing a tube puncturing spoke nipple. With all that done, you're ready to replace the tube. One, partially reinstall the tire leaving one of the beads off the side. Fill the tube just a bit. That ensures that the reinstalled tube isn't folded or caught between the bead and the rim, which as I said, will puncture it. Slide the tube into the tire. You have to push the tire bead over a bit to allow the valve stem to slide into its hole. Now, Work the tire back on, starting at the stem, which we've already said is the tightest part of the tire, and working in both directions towards the opposite side. Now, more magic. As you're getting close to the opposite side, let out that small amount of inflation to lessen the tension. Lock the Schwabby lever into the bead to prevent the tire from sliding off. Soap the tire and rim, and use the bead jack to lever the tire back on. Just set it on the rim on the opposite side, hook it over the bead, and magic.
you've reinstalled the tire. Ta-da! Just reinflate it. Now use the reflective stripe to just visually confirm that the tire is properly seated in the rim. And congratulations, you're back on the road. Now, if it's a rear wheel, the back wheel, you're gonna have to remove it just like you would with any two wheel upright bike. And as we described in the rear wheel removal and reinstallation videos under the maintenance tab, on the service drop down, up above, there are two types of wheels on Catrax, two types of rear wheels. Quick release on the 406 rear wheels and through axle on the larger 559 wheels. Once you've removed the rear wheel, you'll follow exactly the same procedures I outlined for the front wheel. Uh, you'll just have to deal with the wheel kind of being free. Uh, me personally, I hold it between my legs to keep it from squirming away. Uh, but if you have a riding partner, make them hold it. Bonus, they'll get the road dirt on their clothes instead of you. Shortcuts. There are flat fix products out there, such as this can of goop. I wouldn't believe this stuff works, uh, but you know, they've got an umlaut over the U, so you know they're serious. Uh, quick note, uh, it's made in California. Republic California, so to be clear, you know, uh, umlaut, whatever. Anyway, you can keep this small single-use can or one of its competitors on your trike. Uh, most claim to seal up to a quarter inch hole. In my experience, you're still gonna have to replace the tube when you get home, um, but it's definitely no muss, no fuss. Now, what doesn't work? Uh, this is gonna be a bit of an editorial. There are plenty of people out there, uh, including some real experts who will disagree with my personal experience on what works and what doesn't. Here goes. Pre-applied liquid sealants like slime that are supposed to activate when you have a flat, all you need to do is reinflate the tire and spin it and the sealant will plug the hole. These sealants, these sealants dry out over time and they need to be reapplied. The manufacturers claim they're good for up to two years. Our mechanics experience is that they're good for about six months. And trust me, injecting slime into your Presta valve stem can be a messy process that you probably won't want to repeat. Patches. I don't use patches, ever. The application is relatively time consuming, they can fail immediately, and they create a weak spot in the tube. Many riders swear by them. I don't. Tire liners. This may seem completely counterintuitive, but in my experience, tire liners lead to more punctures, not fewer. Why? Because your rubber tire and tube are by design completely pliable. Liners, on the other hand, are made of tough puncture resistant material. Now, if you hit a sharp bump like a raised sidewalk, that moment of impact, that is your weight traveling at speed impacting a tiny area of the tire can generate thousands of pounds of force per square inch. Since the liner isn't pliable like the tube and tire, you can actually catch the edge of the liner, resulting in the tire equivalent of a paper cut, i.e. a puncture. So, not a fan. Pump options. Your Catrike seat back has a pump slot. Any decent quality Presta compatible uh, road pump from any bike shop that fits into that slot will do the trick. You don't need the fanciest pump with the built-in gauge since you can pretty much easily squeeze your own tire to confirm that they're inflated to your liking. Now we stock decent quality pumps here. It would come in PDX. Uh, and for you Catrike Dumont riders, we have a two-in-one pump that can inflate, to, uh, can inflate both the tires and the super high pressure rock shock air suspension shock. There are also USB rechargeable battery pumps available. Uh, we stock the Mini Fumpa from Australia. It's teeny. So it fits in the Catrike seat back pocket with all the other flat fix tools. Uh, it holds a charge for many, many months and it's specifically designed for the Presta valve on your Catrike. Now, the Fumpa is great quality and I love it. It's also not cheap. 
So if your wife doesn't own a recumbent trike shop and let you get anything you want, you can also go online and find uh, lesser priced USB rechargeable options. Um, they, as you can see, they tend to be significantly larger and heavier than the FUMPA. Um, but if you've got any of the storage bag options, such as the panniers or the seat back handlebar bag or the seat side mount bags uh, that we've covered in our storage videos, you may not be too concerned. Um, I bought this one online for comparison. It's pretty good. For home, any good floor pump will do. Just confirm that it's pressed to valve compatible, uh, although I don't know of any bike pumps that are made in the 15, last 15 years that aren't. Uh, and if you have other bikes, you shouldn't have to own two pumps. Most pumps allow you to convert or either built with both Presta and uh, Schrader valve compatibility or allow you to convert pretty, pretty quickly, pretty easily. Um, and like the on the bike pumps, decent floor pumps can be purchased from any bike store. Uh, here at Recumbent PDX, we have a decent inventory of quality floor pumps. Flat resistant tires, so we're getting towards the end. We are a Schwalbe dealer. They make premium tires in sizes and varieties that no other manufacturer does. The Marathon racers that came stock on your Catrike are fantastic, lightweight, durable tires, good for most road riding and most trail riding. And if you don't regularly suffer flats on your normal route, you'll be just fine on the racers. They are really good tires, but our optional Marathon Pluses uh, are the most flat resistant tires that we know of. Uh, an elastic five millimeter thick rubber layer between the tread and the inner tube uh, that effectively embeds thorns, tacks, nails, glass, metal debris before they actually penetrate to the tube. So if you live among the southern and eastern Oregon's goat head thorns or your normal route is strewn with glass and metal debris, we suggest the Marathon Pluses. A few things to note, Marathon Pluses are heavier than the racers. I don't notice this extra weight, but you might. Marathon Pluses, uh, due to the soft layer of rubber, that five millimeters uh, layer of rubber, actually have more rolling resistance than racers. I don't notice this extra resistance, but you might. The tread on the Marathon Plus is equally durable to the Marathon Racer. You will get exactly the same tire life out of either choice. Okay, I think I've covered pretty much everything. Like I said, uh, if you have any questions or if you need a bit of uh, hands-on tutorial, uh, again, that's why you bought your, your trike here at Recumbent PDX. So give us a call or email uh, and we'll schedule some time here in the shop to help you out. Uh, and thanks again and have a great time out on the road.